So we have Frigato here on a blank level I've created. And at any time in Frigato, you can press Control E and you access the editor. Now, what's a little different is that though we're in the editor, the game has not stopped. We can still move around, Frigato can still be played like normal. However, we're also in the editor, so we can uh, we can start changing the level, we can start adding uh, adding tiles, uh, and then we can start interacting with them immediately. So I've just added that, and now I can jump into it. Uh, I can, uh, and then I can perhaps add something else up here and and test, and and we can see that we get this really instant feedback that as soon as we add something, we we can try it out. We can even do something like. Uh, like I jump up here and then I pause the game and while Frigato is in midair I can uh, I can actually move it back a little bit in time so this is kind of at the peak of his jump and then I can add a new object so let's add a, uh, a platform and I can add this platform uh, and then I unpause it and he lands on the platform and then we can even edit the platform so we can make it move. We can tell it we want it to move between those locations, we can uh, change the speed of the platform to make it move faster and, and it all responds instantly. Then, uh, then when we're done making changes, we have all of uh, the normal features you'd expect in an editor, so we can just press U, the undo button, and it starts undoing the things we did. So we, we see a few presses of U, and we're, we're back to our starting level. Now, we're going to use these features to demonstrate making uh, a simple but, but fun challenging level. Uh, so we're going to put some, some blocks up here, and eventually up, up here I'm going to put uh, an enemy who we have to, uh, have to get up there and kill. Uh, let's make that a little lower. And then uh, to get to the enemy, uh, we're going to want to have, uh, we're going to need some help getting up there. So I'm going to put a spring here that we can, can jump on to get up there. Now what's nice is that uh, we might want to tweak how high the spring bounces us. So we can, uh, we can go into the code and we can select which object we want to edit. Uh, so I'm clicking on the spring and it brings up the code for the spring. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump on here and then uh, I'm going to go back in time. Uh, so I'm going to pause it right when we're jumping. Uh, and I can, um, what I can do is I can adjust uh, this spring amount variable. So it started at 3,500, but let's take it down to 2,500 and see how that works. So we go and we see that that doesn't, that doesn't bounce us as high. Uh, so then we can go backwards in time uh, and then we can try, try something different and see how it does. So if we take it to 4,500, uh, we can see how that does. So we unpause it and we can see that that probably took us way too far. So, uh, so as, as it happens here, our, uh, our initial value was, was probably actually correct uh, of, of 3,500. Uh, so we'll try that out. And we think, well, let's make it a little bit higher. Let's ma make it, say, 3,700 and see how that works out. So we try this 3700 value, and we can actually just uh, jump up like that, and we can see, yeah, that, that may, maybe a little better. It gets us just a little above the edge of the platform. Uh, so now, what we're going to do, uh, and, and we, we can do a little better than that uh, in, in terms of how easy it is to do, but uh, to demonstrate, I'm going to add uh, an enemy. So let's add this guy who's going to hurl these big metal balls at us. So I put him down and he starts throwing these balls immediately and they come flying at us uh, and you can see them um, see them flying over our head now what we can do is we can select him and we can start editing his code and we can uh, we can see these metal balls they have uh, every time they land you see that they don't bounce as high as they did last time and that's because of this velocity dampening effect where every time they, they collide their bottom collides with the ground uh, their vo y velocity becomes 70 percent of what it was so we can uh, we can increase or decrease that so we can take that down to say 0 0.5 and you'll see that they instantly be begin almost rolling on the ground uh, or we could take it up so we could make it so that they, they say don't lose velocity at all um, take it all the way to one and we can see that now they start bouncing off the roof and in fact they start bouncing right back at him because they uh, they don't lose any velocity or we we can try uh, we can try any number between 
What we can also do is we can uh, we can double click on this and we can use this slider to change the value and uh, and make it go back and forth in in real time and, and see what different numbers will do for us. Now what I'm going to do is we can also uh, we can pause the game. So I'm going to pause the game right there, and I'm going to uh, to select this one ball. And we can we can move things back in time. So using this slider, we can reverse the flow of time and go back, and we can we can see the path that the ball went along. What we can also do is we can hit this trails button, and we can actually see the trail that the ball makes through time uh, as as it goes. And we can we can take it back all the way to its starting spot, and we can uh, we can edit the level. So uh, so for instance, we could make a little hole here. And now the ball suddenly starts falling through the hole, and it starts hitting here, and uh, and taking a total different trajectory. Uh, or we can uh, we could we, we can also use this to plot out our level. Like we might want to make a hole in here um, for Fregato to fall down. We can actually zoom it out, and we can make some deep hole uh, like a death trap. And we've we've planned it out so the ball won't fall down the hole, but uh, Fregato will unless he's careful to jump over it. Uh, but as well as changing the level and seeing the ball react to that, we can also actually change the code. So, uh, so let's go to our code and let's select uh, this guy who throws the balls, and uh, and we're going to go to the code of the ball. Uh, and like we did before, we can say uh, adjust uh, this, uh, and we instantly see that when we make a change to the code, uh, the the path changes, and it can can change very dramatically depending on what we change. We can uh, we could also, for instance, this is when the ball hits a wall. This shows that it dampens its velocity to 95%. We could uh, just for kicks, we could say that when it hits a wall, it should actually go much faster. So we could take it up to uh, to 1.95 and, and double its speed, or we could uh, take it up to uh, much higher again, and in this case, um, it's, it's just bouncing against, it's just going to bounce between the walls here like crazy. Um, so, uh, and, and then uh, what, what's even cooler is we can actually use the slider again, so we can uh, we can use the Y slider and we can change this and we can uh, tweak it and if we have a specific specific path like here we can see that we really want the ball to go over the pit so we keep on tweaking it until we get it to just the right uh, desirable value that makes it uh, that makes it travel over the pit uh, and likewise at the beginning of the demonstration uh, I, I had Fregato bouncing on the spring, and we could do exactly the same thing. We could um, get Fregato and jump, make him jump on this spring, and then pause him, and then uh, then show Fregato's history. And we can move Fregato back, and then we can uh, edit the code of the spring. And we can change how springy it is. And when we change it, it shows us how high Fregato will bounce. And so by doing this, we can get it to just the right value we want. So, uh, so thank you for listening to this video. Uh, if you haven't heard of Fregato before, Fregato is uh, a free and open source game that, um, uh, that, that is free on computers. We, we charge a, a small fee for it on, uh, on mobile devices. But uh, it's also open source, and we actually encourage it to be used in other projects. And all these features are uh, open source, and uh, we're, we're encouraging Fregato to be used for other game projects. And it's not just limited to platformers. We have uh, ideas for role-playing games, for strategy games, and so forth. And we're hoping to adapt these features uh, to them all. So, uh, so th thank you for listening.